All right, I'd like to welcome you to Johnson Compounding and Wellness, our monthly lecture, which we usually have in person, but for the last couple of years, it's been a little bit interesting. So this is working out well. And let me get the PowerPoint rolling. Just give me one second. And And we'll share that. And if you ladies could just let me know, are you seeing the title slide? Yes. Great. Okay. So on, on this title slide, I do have contact information. You can reach myself, Tamara, or Alora at our name at naturalcompounder.com. Or if you call 781-893-3870, our extensions are right there. Or if you don't remember it, you can just ask whoever answers and they'll get you in touch with us. And so if you have any questions that you would like answered, please feel free to contact us. Also, all three of us are doing either telephone or Zoom consultations. And if you go to the website, naturalcompounder.com, up near the top, there's a button for consultation and you can either book an appointment or read about what we offer in our consultations. So tonight we're going to be talking about some exciting things that have come up recently that are very, very, um, I think, very interesting and that could help change the health of your life or somebody else's life or at least help you understand why you're not feeling good and open up some windows on how you can feel better. And we're just going to jump right in. Everyone's probably had a busy day, so we'll get right to it. And if my computer will go, there we go. All right. So the first thing I'm going to going to talk about is try Fortify watermelon flavor. It comes in two flavors, but watermelon is delicious. And it's a lipos, a true liposomal glutathione. And glutathione is a substance that our body makes. We're supposed to recycle 100% of it, and nobody should ever have to take any glutathione. But the problem is that we are exposed to an awful lot of toxins and lacking certain nutrients, our body doesn't recycle it appropriately. So a lot of people, especially if you're dealing with a toxicity, are trying to clean up a mess that was made in the past metabolically, it can be very helpful. You should use it under the care of a practitioner because just taking glutathione for the sake of, geez, it must be good for me, too much is no good. So you need to be getting the right amount and it has to be, should be taken at the right time. One problem with glutathione is the liposomal, it's absorbed very well, but most of the formulas need to be refrigerated. And once they're open, they oxidize from the oxygen in the air. And after 30 days, you need to throw it out. This one on the next slide, it'll show, they studied it at high temperature and humidity for over 90 days out of the refrigerator. It does not need to be refrigerated. And it did keep its labeled potency for the 90 days. It's effective longer, but the clinical study was for 90 days. It does not have to be refrigerated. The main thing is you just want to shake it before you use it. And some of the liposomal glutathione really isn't a true liposome. That helps get it absorbed into the bloodstream and into the cells through the mucous membrane. Some of them, they just put a fatty substance and water and shake it up, and they call that a liposome. This formulation, they do use a true liposome. It doesn't separate out. You're shaking it more for the flavor because the flavor separates out. And each teaspoon gives you 450 milligrams, and it's an eight-ounce tube, which is double the size of most of them. So um, price-wise, it's pretty good. And this has been clinically studied with double-blind studies. The, this is just a recap. It shows that it does get absorbed and into the cells. 
It shows that it does increase natural killer cell function, which is one of the things glutathione should be doing in our body. And it reduces oxidative stress very rapidly. Oxidative stress is when we have too, free, too many free radicals and that's causing inflammation throughout the body, including the central nervous system. So if you're in one of these states, that's where glutathione used properly can be very, very helpful. Now I mentioned glutathione is called the master antioxidant. The main reason is it helps recycle other antioxidants so the body can keep using them and they last longer in the body. It helps promote detoxification, glutathione, in the liver, the liver attaches to glutathione different toxins or metabolic waste that we have to eliminate, and that's how we get it out of the body. That turns reduced glutathione to oxidized glutathione. Then we have mechanisms in our body to recycle it so we keep using it. The reason there's a little caution with glutathione, some people who really need it take it and then shortly after they start feeling worse or more achy and inflamed. And that's usually because they have a genetic issue where they don't recycle glutathione. And the oxidized glutathione, if that level builds up too high, that can be very inflammatory in the body. And there's things that can be done to help you deal with this. But that's why you don't just keep pounding down more and more and more. You start low and work your way up. Also, I didn't mention at the beginning, we are recording this, and this presentation will be on our website, on the blog site, probably on, I hope, on Friday. And I'm going to be talking a little bit about some labs. And the lab, we do have a blog on naturalcompounder.com. There's a button up at the top for blog that has the, what I'm showing you, the full reports and links to descriptions of what each of the line items are on the reports. So you don't have to be taking a lot of notes, just get the overview tonight, and then you can go to the blog site and get a lot more information. So another product I, I'm very excited about, and I saw right before we started, it's BDNF, not BNDF up at the top. And that stands for brain-derived neurotropic factors. And this is a protein made in the central nervous system. This protein is a growth factor or a miracle growth for the brain and the cells in the brain. BDNF is a key factor in the ability of the brain to change and grow. And that process is called neuroplasticity. We used to think that the brain was hardwired and usually by about four or five years old. And after that, we felt that nothing could be done to change it. But we realized the brain is plastic and it, it is, can change and adapt and heal itself. Someone has a stroke and can't recall and talk, they can be retrained as dead cells that had all that information, but as they, are taught and learn again, the body rewires around that defect. So the brain-derived neurotropic factors are responsible for this. Neuroplasticity involves the ability of the brain to generate new nerve cells through neurogenesis. In addition to building new brain cells, these cells can be repaired and change function. BDNF also is very helpful to strengthen the brain and help it develop new connections between neurons. By strengthening these connections, those are the synapses, it helps improve neurotransmitter transport between the neurons, which maximize their function without changing neurotransmitter levels. So a lot of times, the, the nerves aren't firing properly. All the parts are there, but it's not working well. And helping the brain repair this area can really be very, very beneficial in balancing neurotransmitter function. Clinically, higher BDNF levels are associated with improved cognition and a better mood. These levels can be supported through exercise and targeted supplementation, which is what the BDNF factor product is all about. So some of the benefits, it can improve 
your ability to learn, to focus, remember, deal with stress. It can improve sleep and improve your mood. Now, that's all great. And in a perfect world, our brain would be repairing itself perfectly and everyone would be happy and we wouldn't have recall problems. But neuroinflammation levels from toxins and infections, and we're all toxic to some degree. The environment is terrible. Um, Alora and Tamara can talk about how even if you're trying to eat clean, it's much cleaner than dirty food, but even clean food isn't as clean as it should be. The water supply, the air supply, the chemicals we're putting on our bodies. There was a study done that the average woman just getting up in the morning, showering, putting on moisture lotion and makeup is applying hundreds of chemicals to her body, which gets absorbed. Um, we have glyphosate in the food. So we all really are a little bit toxic. Chronic stress, traumatic brain injury, oxidative stress, um, added sugars cause a lot of inflammation and damage, and social isolation causes a lot of atrophy in the brain. And unfortunately, most of us the last couple of years, we've been more socially isolated than we ever have. So this is BDNF factors. It's by research nutritionals. It's clinically studied. It's not just they put a formula together. The dose is two capsules twice a day with or without food. And you can see the ingredient list there. It has things like skull cap and ashwagandha, lion's mane, black rice, um, phosphatidylserine. Phosphatidylserine we also use for people who are adrenally stressed and it helps calm the adrenals down. Um, Citicoline, very, very helpful and nourishing to the brain. So it, it helps with, as I said before, the cognition and decreasing inflammation in the central nervous system. And with the studies going on, I think we're gonna start seeing even in the mainstream media eventually, you're gonna see different articles about BDNF. So you're gonna be on the cutting edge. Now I'm gonna talk about a, a couple of lab tests that originally they, you really had to hunt out a practitioner to be able to have this test run. And now at Johnson Compounding and Wellness, thanks to the ladies, and the store, we now have access to a lot more, a lot more labs, a lot of the functional labs that are very, very helpful. So I'm just going to give a quick overview of a couple of the labs that I really find helpful. So the Nutraval is by Genova Labs. It's a nutritional evaluation lab. And it's a blood, it does require a blood draw, which if your doctor um, doesn't do blood draws or doesn't want to do it, we do have access to a phlebotomist that can do the blood draw for us. And I'm just going to briefly run through this. It gives us so much information that can lead to imbalances in the body to why you're not feeling well. And the first page, they give you a recap on the oxidative stress, how the mitochondria are doing, your omega-3, 6, and 9 balance, how you're breaking them down and using them, your exposure risk to some heavy metals, and is are some of these toxins interfering with some of the metabolic processes, and also how methylation is working. Methylation is needed to make and use neurotransmitters. Methylation is needed for detoxing the body. It's probably one of the most important processes in our body. And you can see from the, the picture here, it doesn't just tell you the mitochondria are having problems. It even gives a recap as to what levels are high and low, what levels are good. And then as we go into it, part of the recap, it gives us what's going on with your antioxidants, your B vitamins, your minerals. Are they in good shape or is this person, they're in the red. They do need more. There's a reason why 
they're not feeling well. A lot of these nutrients are cofactors in hundreds of metabolic pathways in our body. So sometimes things aren't working because it doesn't have the, they don't have the building blocks they need to function properly. And by adding a little bit of a nutrient that's lacking could get a lot of metabolic processes working. The report goes into detail on each vitamin, what a normal level should be, if you're low in it, what symptoms you might have. It even gives food sources for the different nutrients because ideally we should be getting the majority of our nutrients from our food because we are what we eat. Unfortunately, sometimes the demand is higher than what you can get from food, so we need to supplement. But we're not looking for that magic pill that has everything so we don't have to cook and shop. This is to help us fill in but when you're working with one of us, one of the things we're doing is, especially um, Tamara and Alora, <clears throat> they're looking at your lifestyle and your diet. And is there a nutritional deficiency because you're eating a good diet, but you might be missing something in your diet or it's not a well-balanced diet specifically for you. What's a good diet for one person or a good food plan for one person might not be healthy for another person. And the ladies are great at dealing with this and figuring out what's right for you. And then with a lab like the NutraVal, that can just fine tune the mix. Again, this is just going into more of the vitamins. <clears throat> Excuse me, it does the same thing for a lot of the metals and the trace minerals. It goes into how your, mi your microbiome is doing, how your digestion is working, mitochondrial function, toxic exposure, how your methylation is doing overall. For us and then for the client, it also graphically, because sometimes a lot of us are visual, it shows us how the body is breaking down and using the fatty acids from our food, our carbs, our proteins. And if certain of these markers are off, it shows us that there is a problem. Let's say in this, this is a um, sample report, but this person isn't breaking down their fats well. So it's not getting into acetyl-CoA, which goes in and helps generate ATP. If you don't make ATP, that's our energy unit right at the cellular level. Here, can, sorry, I yeah. just I don't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. Uh, just go to the next slide, please. I think um, maybe we, we got stuck on the NutraVal slide uh, or without the specific markers. Okay, so let me shut this off and I'll start it again. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. No, just hold on, stay on. <clears throat> Okay, is it showing the markers or not? Uh, I personally don't see it or do you? Okay, nope. So that's, let me just, there we go. I'll just change screens. How's that? Perfect, thank you. Okay, so I am so sorry. Um, I'll just show you the screens. This was the recap I was talking about and showing the different markers for mitochondrial inflammation and all that. And I am so sorry giving a recap on the different nutrients, the B vitamins, the minerals, going into the specifics, what foods contain vitamin A, what a deficiency could do to the body, what vitamin A does in the body when it's in the right levels, the, or on the B vitamins, the minerals, the trace minerals, the need for omega-3, um, going into the microbiome and digestive support. This is where I was talking. It would have been hard if you didn't see this to have any idea what I was talking about. But this person doesn't break down fats. And our mitochondria generate more energy, more ATP from fats than any other food source. So somebody could be tired and their system, their metabolic rate is low. And it could be because they might need a little more magnesium and B2 to use the fats appropriately. And so this can really open up windows into why things aren't working the way they should. It goes into dysbiosis. If there's a yeast overgrowth or a fungal overgrowth, it talks about branch chain fatty acids, which are very, very important in the bowel for bowel health and energy. 
It goes into carbohydrate metabolism, energy production, toxicity, and detoxing. It talks about antioxidant levels, more charts, and then it goes into your amino acids, which are very, very important, especially for vegetarians and vegans, because some of the amino acids, specifically one that jumps out at me is methionine, comes from animal protein. And methionine is very, very important for generating methyl groups for methylation. So this can show if there's a deficiency. And when you find out the deficiency, that can be dealt with. Omega on the fats, not only do we have to find out if we're getting enough omega-3s or we're getting too many omega-6 from the vegetables, the vegetable oils, that omega-6 is more inflammatory, omega-3 is more anti-inflammatory, omega-9s, saturated fatty acids, monosaturated fatty acids, they're all important, but they have to be balanced appropriately. And the report even helps us, you might be getting the right amount in, but you can't use it appropriately. And this can tell us where the breakdown is and how to get you using your fats better. And lastly, it talks about the minerals and even some toxic metals. And now with us really concerned about our immune system, the balance of your zinc and copper is very, very important. And knowing your levels is very important. People are taking a lot of zinc and that's great. But if the zinc level goes too high, that can throw balances off in the body. All right, so let me I'm gonna now I just want to you know, let me get back up there and I want to change what I'm showing you. I hope. Um, okay, and let me know if you see the oat test now. Okay, the organic acid test, the oat test, I find with people who are having a complex problems or whatever they're doing isn't working, I find the oat test probably is the most one of the more valuable tests that I suggest people run. It's a urine test, very easy. It's the first urine in the morning. And I'll run through this quickly. It's testing about 60 different metabolic pathways by the metabolic waste product that's generated. So it's letting us know, is that pathway working well? Or what is coming out that shouldn't be coming out, which means there's a problem. The first section is very, very helpful to see if there's a yeast or fungal overgrowth, or you can see Aspergillus here, that's one of the molds. So it can let us know if there could be a mold problem. It talks about the good bacteria and how the balance is, how they're working. Clostridia can even affect our neurotransmitter levels if it's too high. So they do test for clostridia. They have the different charts to show the pathways. It goes into the mitochondrial function, um, how the Krebs cycle is working, how we're using our amino acids, our neurotransmitters, how they're being used in the body. It also shows us a couple of markers, these bottom two, the quinolinic acid. If quinolinic acid is high, that means it can be for many reasons, but that's in the brain and that can be causing neuroinflammation. And that's a very important thing to know. It shows us how we're breaking down our fats and our ketone levels. And the Nutraval shows us what the blood level is of different nutrients. The oat test, the organic acid test is showing us how the cells are using the vitamins. And so this person with the methylmalonic acid being dead center, that means whatever their B level is in the B12 in the blood, the cells are using it and they're very happy with the amount they, they have access to. So it gives us more, instead of just getting a number where it should be in the blood, it's showing us how the body is using it. 
when B6, this marker is low, that means the body needs more B6 and B6 along with zinc are two very important cofactors. And I'm finding in a lot of people when metabolically things are off, a lot of times their body needs more B6. So this can be very helpful. It gives us how the body's using CoQ10, glutathione precursors, the NAC and other nutrients. It goes into how we're using and how the levels of amino acids are. If our glutathione level is adequate, are we methylating or do we have most likely a high toxic exposure? And then at the end, it, it gives you the different charts so it makes it easier and a description of what some of the markers that are off could mean. And so that's the organic acid test. And I just have one more and then I'll turn it over to the ladies. Let me just change my sharing again. And that's gonna be this one. And I'm just gonna talk real fast on this and Tamara and Alora use this one very often. And they are the whiz at you reading this. Tamara, is the GI map on the screen now? Yes, I see um, the words, the GI map. GI map oh. Okay, but you don't see that I picked the wrong screen. I'm sorry. I thought I was being so smart. As much as I always prepare for technology, it seems to not work uh, the same way. The and I wanted to be able to show the different screens. Well, there it comes. Okay. There we go. Yep, Is there there. A okay. So there's a lot of GI tests, gut tests. And the ones that the hospitals usually run take stool, they look at it under a microscope. And if they see something, you have it. And if they don't see it, you don't have that problem. And one of the problems with that is some of the, especially the parasites, if they're real happy in your gut, they're gonna latch on and you might have three or four poop collections and nothing comes out. And so it, sometimes if just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's not there. This is looking for DNA metabolic markers for the organisms. So from their waste, metabolic waste product. So if the marker is there, the organism's there, even if we don't see it. And so it, this report checks a lot of things. It looks for a lot of different pathogens, some parasites, some viral pathogens. It looks at H. pylori in levels, but not just is H. pylori there, it looks at there's all different virulence factors that could really make a difference if they're positive and negative. It looks at the normal bacteria. How are the good guys doing? It looks at the opportunistic organisms. Are they growing more than they should be? That could be causing a problem. Some autoimmune triggers. It looks for fungus and yeast specifically, or especially candida. It looks for some viruses like Epstein-Barr. Some, some of the major parasites, worms, and hopefully nobody has any of those, but if you do, we can help you deal with it. My favorite part is this bottom part of the panel because it gives an overview of how everything is working. The first marker is how are you breaking down your fats? The next one, how are the pancreatic enzymes being released and used? Beta-glucuronidase is a marker for one of the major detox pathways through the liver. Is the lining really getting irritated? Is there blood in the stool? Secretory IgA is a marker for how our immune system function is doing in the gut. 60 or 70% of our immune function comes from the good bacteria in the gut. Antigliadin is, are you reacting to gluten? This is a real big one for everybody. Some people more than others, but most of us don't deal with gluten well, even if we're not having major symptoms. Calprotectin is a marker in the bowel that lets us know how inflamed the bowel is. And zonulin is an excellent marker 
when zonulin is high, leaky gut is, it's like a screen in a screen window in a submarine. There's no way you're gonna get healthy without getting that under control. So the GI map is another fantastic um, lab. There's many, many more we could spend all night on it, but these are the ones I wanted to touch on. And so now I am gonna stop sharing and I am gonna turn it over to Tamara. And so there you go. Thank you. And I think it sort of ties in nicely too about some of the products that we'll be mentioning, um, all the testing that we'll be mentioning. Okay. So I will present this to make it bigger. Awesome. Can everyone see my screen now? Looks awesome. Good. Okay. Thank you. Okay, perfect. So perfect timing coming off of um, Gary talking about the stool test. Uh, I decided to highlight a probiotic. There are so many different types of probiotics out there. There's always new ones coming out. We're always getting calls <laughs> from companies saying, hey, do you want us to or do you want to start using our probiotic? Um, so I thought, why don't I choose one that I've really been liking lately and that I think can work really well for a lot of different types of people. Um, so this for store flora, it is a sort of the little sister probiotic to a probiotic called Megaspore, which some of you may be familiar with, but I'll go through some of the um, differences between this one and the Megaspore. And so this probiotic contains spore probiotics and then one yeast strain. And so the spore, for, spore, excuse me, spore of bacteria or the spore probiotics are dormant bacteria. So they're not alive in their active state, but they're also not dead. They're in this inactive state, which actually makes them really, really good to put in a supplement because it will survive all of the different harsh pH and acidity levels of our GI tract, especially in our stomach. And it won't become activated until it reaches where we want it, which is the large intestine. That's where we have the most of our bacteria. And so there are two strains here, um, and this Bacillus subtilis, H, or I like to call it H258, a little bit easier. And then we have the Bacillus clausi. And so these two strains are both in that mega spore product that you may be familiar with, but there is so much amazing research on these two strains specifically, uh, which is why they are highlighted here in the Restore Flora. So just as Gary was talking, if when we were talking about our gut, uh, gut and our gut lining, we want it to be sort of nice and tight so that select nutrients or fully digested nutrients can get through. But we don't want any other other any other type of junk getting through our gut lining because that can really start to show up in other parts of our body, whether it be skin and brain fog or GI issues. Um, and so. Uh, one of the major studies that this company has done was showing that these strains are going to help to heal that leaky gut and heal that gut lining, which is amazing. Uh, we've also seen, especially with the HU58, that it can be really immune balancing and helping to support a, an appropriate immune reaction or immune balance. And this can be really helpful for immune, autoimmune diseases. And that would include autoimmune immune diseases right in the gut like Crohn's disease or colitis, for example, uh, or also uh, other autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, for example. Uh, these bacteria or these spores are also really, really interesting and cool because they are not only just going to help to support um, the gut lining, but they can also help to increase the levels of bacteria that are not even in the probiotic, which is really, really awesome. Um, the HU58 also has some really cool properties to it that, um, and it can release some natural antibiotics. And what it is doing is helping to ward off and make sure that different invaders don't set up shop and live in our gut. And this can help for our good bacteria to grow and thrive. The HU58 was also studied uh, to, and shown to support liver health, 
which is interesting and not maybe something that all probiotics can, can tout. Uh, and then also uh, these strains can produce some different antioxidants and nutrients. Um, so one is natokinase, which can be really helpful for cardiovascular health. And then also vitamin K and even some B vitamins. So we're getting a lot of bang for our buck with these, just these two strains here. And I know oftentimes when we're looking at the store and we're looking at different probiotics, they're all sort of fighting for the most amount of strains or the highest amount of billions of CFUs, but um, this is not going to be the most diverse bacteria or probiotic in terms of bacterial strains but it has such amazing benefits that again, we're getting a lot of bang for a buck here. Okay, uh, then the one yeast strain here is actually a beneficial yeast. Uh, and I know some people, and I'm guilty of this myself, I sometimes use the word yeast and candida interchangeably um, versus yeast is a, a big group of a lot of different types of species. And when we're talking about yeast in a negative, <laughs> negative way, we're usually referring to some of those candida strains that can have an impact on neg a negative impact on our GI tract and in other parts of our body. But this strain here, this Saccharomyces boulardii, this is actually a really beneficial yeast strain. And it can actually help to prevent or crowd out or keep something like that candida at bay. This Saccharomyces boulardii is also really, really well studied and has been shown to help with diarrhea. Uh, so it's a really awesome one, especially uh, if someone is having some GI issues and they tr uh, usually trend more towards diarrhea versus uh, more like constipation. The Saccharomyces boulardii strain has also been shown to help to uh, support our immune system in our gut as well. Uh, and sometimes even directly from that GI map, that stool test, we can really say, oh, wow, I think that this one might be a really good option for you because we have some gut lining support. Maybe we saw your zonulin was off. Uh, if we saw that your immune system was struggling a little bit, then this one might be a really great option too. So we can really uh, make some customized recommendations for you based off of that test. But what I like about this Restore Flora is that it's really good for a lot of different things. So if someone's coming to me and I don't know their full picture, I don't know every single strain or haven't run a test on them, I can still feel pretty confident that this is going to be a probiotic that can help. Um, so here we have a pretty long list and this isn't really even everything that this can help with, but uh, we're definitely talking about people again with acute or chronic diarrhea, UTIs, maybe someone that's recently been on antibiotics. This can be a great probiotic uh, during or and or after. Um, this probiotic uh, has, oops, and I just realized I wrote it on here twice, um, but has been studied um, to help to treat uh, C. difficile or Clostridium difficile, which can also cause diarrhea. Um, I'll usually pair it with um, a Megaspore as well or some an, an extra an, uh, probiotic just to get some extra action in there. Um, but uh, again, it can help with other types of infections in the gut, such as candida, parasites, H. pylori, which lives in our stomach. And then something that I'd like to highlight too, is that this is a probiotic that is safe for SIBO or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, where someone is having too much bacteria, particularly in the small intestine, which can cause either gas or bloating or constipation or diarrhea or a mix of all of the above. And part of the reason why it can be really helpful um, as opposed to other, back, uh, other probiotics when someone has SIBO is because of this spore nature of these bacteria strains, where in another probiotic, the bacteria might start to mix in with everything else in our small intestine, but we can be sure that these spores are really only going to become active in the large intestine. So we won't exacerbate SIBO and we won't exacerbate these types of symptoms. 
Um, but overall, um, just sort of for, uh, on a general sense, this probiotic is going to be really great for people that are maybe a little bit more sensitive to probiotics. You can start off nice and slow with this one. You can even do one capsule every other day or open it up and uh, sprinkle a little bit in your water or in a smoothie since it is so stable. And, and then again, those who just maybe tend to lean towards um, or having looser bowel movements versus someone that is a little bit more backed up. Not that someone with constipation can't use this, um, but again, that Saccharomyces boulardii strain has really been studied for diarrhea. And sometimes I, I get a feeling that if someone were to jump to a stronger probiotic or one that has more strains in it, that it might exacerbate their diarrhea. So it's a really, really nice entry to spore-based probiotics. And as you can see, it has a lot of great benefits. All right. All right. Okay. Our next product here is Promune. And I'm not going to go over every single ingredient in this um, in depth, just because I think we've all heard a lot about vitamin C, vitamin D, and zinc in the past few years, but I'll just sort of highlight them uh, and then talk about uh, who this product might be good for. Um, so again, as you can see here, we have just these foundational um, vitamins and minerals, and I really like to make sure and and let people know to get their vitamin D checked in the winter time. Most of us are low in vitamin D living in New England, or you might be joining from somewhere else, but here in New England, uh, most of us tend to be low in vitamin D as the sun rays are a lot weaker in the winter time. And so this product does have some vitamin D in it. It's 2,500 IU. Depending on what your levels are and if you uh, usually supplement in the winter time with vitamin D, this is low enough where you might still need to add on a separate vitamin D if you're low or deficient. But for maybe the general public, this might be enough to carry you through the winter and maybe even uh, the other seasons as well. Um, and then something that's really great is that we have the zinc here, but we also have the quercetin. Uh, and quercetin is an antioxidant and it's going to work synergistically with the zinc so that the zinc can be brought inside of the cell and be used for what we want it to do. And uh, it can definitely be helpful for preventing viral replication. Uh, it's also going to be really helpful for uh, hair, skin, and nails too. And I know some people have maybe mentioned to me, maybe after um, getting a certain virus, uh, that maybe their hair is, is falling out. So the zinc could be a good one to think about incorporating as well. Uh, and then we have N-acetylcysteine, and that is going to be really helpful for decreasing inflammation. It's going to be helpful for detoxification support, and it can also help to support our, um, our lungs and our respiratory health as well. So this product is really designed for daily immune support, and it can be taken safely on a long-term basis. So if you feel like you want something every single day, just as an extra layer of support for your immune system, this would be a really good option. It's not going to be a heavy duty hitter for when you are actually sick. So you could pair this Promune maybe with your favorite uh, supplement for when you're actually sick. Uh, for example, we have some specific product, products like, um, oh, I'm forgetting the name, but Virusid from Orthomolecular. And then we have one from our brand as well. I don't know, Gary and Nalora, if you can think of it off the top of your head, um, but we definitely have some su extra support where we can combine products together if you are actually feeling, uh, are actually sick. Uh, okay, and then just in addition to um, that Im daily immune support, it's uh, always also going to provide some antioxidants and again, really focusing on that, um, on that lung health. And so my recommendation would be uh, maybe if you're around people a little bit more often, uh, some of us still have to go into the office or if we're going to be grocery shopping or around more people, um, and that's just part of your daily life, then this is definitely a great product to have, have with you and, and continue to, to take throughout the winter and maybe even the summer, spring and fall too. 
All right, I'll make myself and, uh, and then I can let Allure take over. All right, all right. So just two more products we're gonna go over. Um, so this one is called Pro Motility. And this is an herbal motility blend. So what is meant by motility? So when we say motility, we're talking about something called peristalsis, which is these rhythmic-like contractions in the intestines that move digestible substances from the base of your stomach all the way down and out the other end. Um, we're also talking about something called the migrating motor complex, or for sure, for short, MMC. And this is also similar to peristalsis, but instead it's helping facilitate indigestible substances and bacteria out of your stomach, out of your small intestine, into the colon and large intestine so it can pass out through stool. So the migrating water complex is really like the housekeeper of the gut. It just sweeps away anything that may be lingering. And it also can help prevent uh, the migration of bacteria back up into the small intestine. So Tamara, when she was talking about um, the restore flora, she was mentioning a condition called SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And so it's really often to see, it's common to see, and it happens often that there'll be some sort of impairment with the migrating motor complex and SIBO because we need normal motility. We need things to be flowing and, and moving out. So we have two herbs that help with that motility. We have artichoke and we have ginger. And the two dosages here, so 100 milligrams of the artichoke leaf extract and 20 milligrams of the ginger root extract have been clinically proven to stimulate gastric motility and proper emptying to promote that cleansing of the gut, that MMC, to support microbial balance in the GI tract by making sure that bacteria is moving out and not lingering in the wrong places like the small intestine, to help improve digestion because things are flowing and moving out and down, and to relieve any temporary gastric discomfort. And the reason you may have gastric discomfort is if food is sitting in your stomach or sitting in your intestines longer than it should be, we feel pressure, things ferment, gases produce. So it's super important that things are moving out in a timely manner. Also, we know that artichoke and ginger have very well-documented benefits for other aspects of digestion. Artichoke is great at supporting the liver and stimulating bile. We need bile to properly absorb and utilize any sort of fatty acid. So if you're taking your pro immune and you're getting a wonderful amount of vitamin D, you need bile to fully absorb that vitamin D and make sure it's getting into your body. Uh, also, if you're eating dietary fat, like if you're eating amazing salmon with, with all of its omega-3s or avocados, we got to make sure you have plenty of bile so you're utilizing the nutrients and the fatty acids in those foods. So artichoke is wonderful at that. And ginger, as we, as a lot of you may know, is really helpful at alleviating any sort of nausea and vomiting. Um, so it's kind of a win-win, this product, because we have these products that are, these two herbs that are great for digestion, and then it ensures that you're having that normal motility. And tomorrow you can go to the next slide. So um, there's a few indications for this product. The first one I had just mentioned, that small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Um, this also may be helpful in somebody who's dealing with hypothyroidism. So hypothyroidism is a condition in which the thyroid is sluggish and slowed down. The thyroid is a master gland. It affects a lot of aspects of your body. And if it's hypo in a sluggish, slow down state, that's also going to affect peristalsis and other muscle functions. So it's really common to see individuals who have hypothyroidism or Hashimoto's that they're dealing with chronic constipation because everything is just slowed down in their metabolism. So then, of course, we have chronic constipation, not only from hypothyroidism, but other people just struggle with it throughout their whole lives. And part of the reason why you may have chronic constipation is because 
you have that slow down peristalsis, slow down migrating motor complex, food isn't moving out fast enough. And, or I should say the food that's become stool isn't moving out fast enough. And so your large intestine, your colon reabsorbs the water that was in the stool and then it gets really dry and hard. And you may find that it's just stuck in you a little bit. And when you go to the bathroom and you're straining a little bit, you'll see that you have incomplete bowel movement. So maybe you'll push out a little pebble or something, but you're not having a full satisfied bowel movement. Um, even if you are having a complete bowel movement, but it's maybe once every other day, once every two days, you're also struggling with just sluggish bowels and you want to make sure that we're ramping that up. And then lastly, uh, this one surprises people, but I think it's really cool that uh, when you travel, your normal um, migrating motor complex and peristalsis can be affected, especially when changing time zones. And that's because our body, all systems in our body are connected to the circadian rhythm. And so your body typically would have lots of movement in the morning in your intestines to promote a bowel movement. But if you're changing time zones or just even changing your routine, your peristalsis gets confused a little bit and it's easy to get backed up and get traveler's constipation. So this would be really helpful to take while traveling because then you can just ensure that that peristalsis and normal motility is not being interrupted at all. So just in terms of dosing really quickly, it's totally safe to take this long term, which is a really wonderful thing. You don't have to worry about um, dependency or anything like that. The clinical studies that they did, um, they had participants take it twice a day, uh, once before lunch and once before dinner. But Tamara and I sometimes recommend it for people at bedtime, especially if you're on, taking a lot of supplements already and uh, you get filled up with supplements when you're trying to eat a meal and it just doesn't appeal to you to do that. You could absolutely just take it before bedtime. Uh, this is also going to help ensure that by morning time comes and we have that normal circadian rhythm, we're promoting a bowel movement in the morning, which is a really healthy, great way to start your day so you don't feel sluggish and heavy. Um, one little caveat is that if you are somebody that uh, is really sensitive to ginger or maybe has a history of acid reflux, maybe taking it on an empty stomach isn't the most ideal and taking it with food would be preferred so that that ginger, which is like, you know, it's a spice, it doesn't irritate your stomach lining. <clears throat> okay, so um, now we're moving on to hail bone broth. Uh, so this is a new product we just got in, which I'm really excited about. And it's from um, a local a husband and wife in Massachusetts. So we love to support local businesses, small businesses like ourselves. Uh, and so this is 100% grass-fed and grass-finished bone broth. And so um, that grass-finished grass component is just meaning that um, the cattle, they're not only being, they're not only consuming grass well, the whole time, but in the finishing process, process before slaughter, uh, it's really common in um, like factory farming and things like that to feed them with like other grains. And so they're not truly 100% grass fed, but these cattle are just having grass the whole time. And that's important because it's affecting the quality of nutrients in the final product in the bone broth. So the benefits of bone broth are that it's just a very nutrient dense, highly nutritious food. It has lots of minerals and vitamins. So we have iron, vitamins A and K, fatty acids, fatty acids like omega-3s, selenium, zinc. Again, these are all really supportive for immune function and many other things in the body. Manganese, calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, collagen, gelatin. It's also a really great source of protein, which is um, sometimes surprising for people. It has 10 grams per just one cup serving. It may protect joints and bones, uh, which makes sense, right? Because if we read these minerals that are in it and uh, collagen and gelatin, those are the raw materials of our connective tissue and joints. Uh, it also provides anti-inflammatory amino acids to help gut lining repair. 
So anytime we have protein, we have amino acids because that's what makes up protein. And these amino acids can downregulate inflammation and literally like sew and stitch up the uh, intestinal lining. And Tamara was giving this visual earlier of uh, leaky gut where we have these leaks and we want to make sure we seal that gut lining. Well, those amino acids can help do that. It also can help strengthen hair and nails again, because our hair, our nails, they're all made up of protein, <laughs> collagen. So we're just getting a great source of that. So uh, this also may be appropriate for specific conditions. So individuals that have an inflammatory gut condition, so any sort of IBD, um, Crohn's colitis, or if you just are dealing with IBS and leaky gut, like I just men mentioned, Again, about the joints and bones, if you have osteoarthritis or osteoporosis, and if you have any sort of autoimmune condition, that's because our immune system is based off of our gut function, and a lot of autoimmune conditions stem from a dysregulated, impaired gut. Um, just another little caveat. This would be inappropriate for individuals that have extreme histamine intolerance and mast cell activation. And the reason for that is bones that are cooked for a really long time, which is how bone broth is made, they release histamine. So if you're somebody that is struggling right now with histamine, maybe skip out on it, or eventually you probably could tolerate it once the histamine issues are addressed but just probably at smaller amounts than somebody else that doesn't have that histamine dysregulation. Um, but that's just something to be aware of and conscious of. But even if you don't have these conditions that I just listed, bone broth is still a really wonderful supportive food to incorporate on a regular basis. I like it because it's so nutrient dense and I also like it because it's so convenient. So I literally, no joke, right before this call, had my dinner and I didn't have very much time. So I was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? I'm going to heat up some bone broth, make some sauteed spinach and throw some noodles in it. I kid you not. So grab some frozen veggies, grab some rice, beans, noodles, and you can make a little soup stew very quickly. And it's super nutrient dense and you're getting a pretty good uh, portion of protein as well. Uh, so yeah, I think that's the last one. And I definitely think we have questions. Oh, Gary was just me mentioning the price. It's $24, which is really great. You're kind of getting like a wholesale bulk price. It's $24 for four servings and they are frozen. And the servings are frozen cubes, which is like really convenient instead of it just being a big um, frozen mass because then you don't get to control the portions as much. Uh, so when you come, if you, obviously we can't really ship this because it's frozen. So if you come into the store and go to the left where our probiotic fridge is, we have a small little uh, fridge that opens at the top that has freezer. the bone broth. Oh, freezer, not fridge. Yeah. Next to the probiotic fridge, we have a freezer. Okay. That was great. Thank you so much. Um, we have a question. What if you're someone with multiple chronic health issues? How do you know which tests to take? And that's, my answer would be, that's where working with your practitioner um, or with one of us, we would look at your history and any labs you have and what's going on and what the progression of your problem has been. And then, um, you know, ideally if the labs were free, there was no charge, it would be wonderful to have so much data and run all the different labs. But what I know I do and the, and Tamara and Alora, we look at what information do we have, what's going on, and where are the holes? Where What information do we need? And then what lab hopefully will provide us with actionable data? And, you know, if just to do a lab to see if a number is off, that's going down the mainstream you know, root. Let's just do a bunch of tests. And if we find a number that's off, what can we do to force the number up or down? The way that we work is if a number is off, why isn't the body dealing with that? Why hasn't the body been able to handle it and get things working well? And what can we do to support the body 
to do what it should be doing. So that was sort of a long winded answer. It depends upon what's going on. And that's what we're here for to help you figure that out. So you spend your healthcare dollars very effectively that'll give information that you can use because you can't put a dollar value on your health, but we all have to put a dollar value on what we can spend. It doesn't matter how rich you are. Everyone only has a certain amount. And to spend money on supplements or tests that you don't need, that's just flushing money down the toilet. So, you know, getting some guidance can be very helpful. I always like to say too on that is that if your gut <clears throat> is struggling and a lot of us do need some, some gut support that that can sometimes be a good place to start if you're, you're really unsure, because if you're not digesting and absorbing your nutrients, it's going to make a lot of other things in the body more difficult. But uh, I think we all like to meet with people before we uh, send people off with a test kit so that we can make sure that we feel comfortable that we're recommending the most uh, pertinent test and uh, that you feel that way too. Good point. Yeah. Just to add on, um, I think working on fundamentals first may help you discern between which test is most helpful for you. Because if you don't have your fundamentals in place, like everything's going to be up in the air and not uh, working. So once you get fundamentals, you know, sleep, nutrition, exercise, all the right things, then it probably will become more clear what test is the most appropriate. And there also could be multiple tests, but if someone's digestive system is a train wreck, there's really no sense taking just a whole lot of supplements because you're not, it might irritate it. You're not going to absorb them. You're just going to urinate or poop them out. And that was very technical. Sorry about that. Um, but the idea would be to sort of look at the hierarchy and you start at the bottom and the foundational and work your way up and getting the gut functioning better is the first thing. So there could be somebody could do a NutraVal and have a whole lot of deficiencies, but their digestive system could be a mess. That could be the reason the NutraVal was off. So it would be better to figure out what's going on in the gut. And then if you're not getting better, do the NutraVal. So, you know, there is a rhyme and reason to it. Um... Let's see. Oh, somebody was just mentioning to let us know that she's she did come and show up. Thank you very much. And if anyone does have any more questions, please type them in. If not, um, you can reach us at well at the store are either Alora, Tamara, or Gary at naturalcompounder.com. You can also reach us through the website, naturalcompounder.com. You can set up a consultation to talk to us or meet with us. You can also, the blog, we have a lot of great information there and there'll be a recording um, up. Somebody just wrote, how soon will the recording be available? I am going to start editing it tomorrow morning. And I'll say, unless there's a major technical problem, it'll be up on Friday. And everyone who attended, I will send a follow-up email with the link to it. And if you have any friends that signed up and life gets ahead of us and they couldn't make it, they'll be getting a link also for it. And I don't see any other questions. Um, I just want to thank all of you for joining us. We really enjoy doing this and we hope it's very helpful for you. I'd love to thank Tamara and Alora for their support and their help putting these together. And also, if there's any topic that any of you would like us to address, please let us know for a future webinar. And have a good night, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Thanks for coming by. Thanks, everyone. Bye.